This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Cerebral Cinema and the WON Radio Network present to you Superwoman. Yes, Superwoman, the dynamic crime fighter. Superwoman, the champion of justice. Superwoman, who in truth is mild-mannered Chicago news reporter Emily Nesbacher. Now, we bring you a world of adventure with Rocky Jordan. <laughs> hey, Rocky. Rocky, we're going dry back here. All right, repeats for both of you. You said it. Fill them up and then fill them up again. Come on, join us for one, huh, Rocky? Ah, uh, sorry, Eddie. Make it some other time. Ah, uh, spoil sport, huh? No, no, no. He's all right, Pearl. They don't come any better. Well, here's looking at you, Rocky. Yeah. <coughs> hey, what the... Ooh. Hey, watch it, will Eddie, you? Eddie, what's the matter with you? Street, not far off Cairo's native quarter, stands the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. The Cafe Tambourine, crowded with forgotten men, alive with a babble of many languages. For this is Cairo, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's Rocky Jordan story, City of Bakshish. <laughs> The threat of a blistering calm scene off the desert had passed that afternoon, so the Kyrenes were out and around, and the business of the tambourine was good. Some British sailors, a sprinkling of summer tourists, a couple of guilty-faced natives hiding their drinks. At the back end of the bar sat an American fellow, a wrinkled white suit and last year's Panama shoved back in his head. A newspaper man of sorts named Eddie Harper. With him was a hapless blonde who needed a fresh bottle of peroxide. I just served them a second round when things began to happen. Eddie struggled to his feet, then fell backwards across a table into the floor. He didn't move as I got around to him. Well, don't everybody just stand there. Do something. Now, I'll take care of him, lady. Ah, he's out cold. But he wasn't tight. He'd only had a couple. Uh, Chris, get a doctor here right away. I am Dr. Bear. If I might be a bear. I'll say you can. Yeah, he just keeled over here, doctor. Hey, as I saw... Hmm, the eyes. The man was drinking from this glass. Sure he was. What about it? Hmm? Uh, perhaps there is somewhere we can take you, monsieur. Yeah, sure. There's a cot in my office. Help us with him, will you, Chris? Hmm, as I thought, monsieur. You know what hit him, doctor? Nothing that is so unusual. He will be all right once he gets over the effects of... What you call them, uh, knockout drops? Knockout drops? In his drink? Oui. Not a strong dosage, fortunately. Give him some strong coffee as soon as he is able to take it. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Mm. Oh, here's my card if you need me. I do not think it likely, though. Good day, monsieur. Goodbye, Doc. And thanks. Well, those things happen around Cairo. All you can do is try and make sure they don't happen again. The blonde had hung around, so after the doctor left, I let her come in the office. She gave the name Pearl Florin, just a friend of Eddie's. After a half hour or so, he was able to sit up. Oh, oh, brother, my head. Here, drink this coffee. It'll help. Uh, thanks. I'll say it helps. Ooh, say, did I have that many drinks? It wasn't a drink, Eddie. It's what was in it. Huh? Knockout drops, the doctor says. Oh, so that's what it feels like. Uh, I wouldn't know. Look, oh. uh, somebody had to put the stuff in your drink, you know. Who else was around except Pearly? Now, look, mister, what are you driving mm. at? I was around, and so were you. You served him the drink. Oh, take it easy, baby, take it easy. I told you Jordan's an all right guy. Mind filling that cup again? Huh? Yeah, sure. Oh. No idea who'd have it in for you, huh, Eddie? Huh? Let me go down my list. Well, it's bound to pick up a few enemies in my business. Newspaper reporting? <laughs> yeah, sure. Freelance stuff around the world. I get a good story, I file it with some American newspaper. There are those that'll buy my kind. What kind? 
<laughs> Personalities, let's say, huh? The private lives of respectable Americans on the loose in Paris or Rome or Cairo. Oh, you'd be surprised what an energetic reporter can dig up. Yeah, I'd wondered what your racket was. Oh, it's perfectly legit, Jordan. So I get some dirt on an unsuspecting tourist. He, uh, he gets a break. If he doesn't want it to get in print back home, well, uh, it's worth something to him. And for that, all somebody slipped you was knockout drop. <laughs> it's all in the business, Jordan. Why, I'll bet there isn't a person alive who hasn't done just one thing he's ashamed of. All I got to find out is what it is. How are you feeling, Eddie? Uh, Pearl, there's an American picture showing at the Pyramid Theater. Yeah? What about it? Well, why don't you go see it, honey? Well, I like that after I hang around oh, here. Oh, I'd beat it. Okay. But just wait until you... <laughs> Keeps him interested. <laughs> Look, Eddie, if you're feeling all right now... Uh, just a second, Jordan. There's uh, something just occurred to me. Your cafe tambourine, why, it's a natural. Well, what? Well, it's off the beaten path, you know. The visiting firemen have a way of letting down their hair in a joint like this. Uh-uh, no dice, Eddie. You just spot the tourist and the story. I ride it up and handle the uh, business end. That's all there is to it. I don't go for blackmail, yours or any other kind. Oh, you're not taking any chances, Jordan, none at all. I said drop it. I'm not interested. I'll give you an example of how it works. Say, uh, say I send a feature story to a New York paper about an American adventurer in Cairo. Hazy background runs, uh, runs a cafe. Gets mixed up in all sorts of scrapes, murders. What's this leading to? The latest, somebody gets knockout drops in his drink. Witnesses? Oh, plenty of them. The uh, papers are eaten up. Well, get this straight, Eddie. You couldn't hurt me or my cafe. Sounds like an interesting challenge. Is that a threat? Oh, now, don't get me wrong, Jordan. Like I said, that's just an example. I'm offering you a deal, pal. There's an American picture at the pyramid. Go see it. <laughs> okay, Jordan. I'll let you know if it has a happy ending. Eddie Harper sauntered out. As he did, I noticed a heavy-jawed man lift his 300 pounds from a chair, leaving a big meal unfinished and follow out after him. And I did a lot of wondering... Most of all, about how soon Eddie'd show up again. But when several days went by without any more from him, I decided he'd forgotten about me. It was a week later at the top of the noon rush hour when somebody else walked in. Sergeant Greco of the Cairo police, his badge all shined for the occasion. Three of his men had planted themselves along the walls before I knew what was going on, and Greco took the spotlight. The tambourine will be cleared at once. What? You will all please to step quietly out the door and into the street. Wait, what's your Go peaceably. Do not wait to finish the food or the nectar of the infidels. Clear the place, everyone. All right, right stay right where you are, I'm folks. American citizen. Cut the act now, Greco. So, Mr. Jordan, you choose to defy the authority of the Cairo police. Just explain it quick. What's it about? You have only to read the word, but do it quickly. Ah. Uh, See, I'm an American Who sent you with this? My immediate superior, of course, the Captain Sabai. When it's something like this, Sam could have come himself. The Captain is busy yes. with more important I'll matters. The, down here. the warrant is clear. The cafe tambourine is closed. Your license to operate such an establishment has been revoked indefinitely. Oh, just tell me first? why. What's it all about? That is not my concern. Amut, Ali, keep the people moving. Oh, you sure like to overdo things, don't you, Greco? All right, we'll see what Sam has to say. If he cares to see you at all, Mr. Jordan. He will, Greco. You bet he will. Come in, Jordan. I will give you a moment. It'll take more time than that, Sam. You sent Greco with that warrant? I did. It's not like you. You could have talked to me. Jordan, there are times when my hands are tied. I know that. You've given me a chance before, Sam. You've explained things. Jordan. Go on. When you first came to Cairo, a man of the West among those of the East, I gave you serious counsel. Sure you did. It was good advice. Because of our growing respect for each other, I have given you the benefit of the doubt many times. I never regretted doing so in spite of the embarrassment with my superiors. But now... Embarrassment? Look, what's this leading to? Jordan, above all else, I advise you to not only guard your actions, but your words. You owe me that one thing. Sam, will you get to the point? You wish to know why your tambourine has been closed. I suggest, then, that you talk to Amin Bey, the commissioner of licenses for this sector. But you can tell it to me. That is all, Jordan. All right, Sam. 
I've been charmed. And Jordan. Yeah? Whatever happens, remember that I am an officer of the law. I, for one, cannot forget that. I got out trying to make sense out of what Sam had said. He'd said the answer was with Amon Bay, Commissioner of Licenses. I took all the shortcuts driving to the government center. When I found the license commissioner's division, I asked for Amon Bay and was told to wait. It was the usual treatment. I cooled my heels for an hour and a half. I was finally ushered into his office, one of the smaller ones with a small desk and a small man behind it. Black mustache, too much gold braid on his fez, and a jewel stick pin that hurt my eyes when it caught the light. Amon Bay looked me over. I rather expected you, Mr. Jordan. Captain Sabaya says you got some things to explain to me about closing up my tambourine. So the captain chooses not to discuss it with you? But you will, Amon Bay. Let's have it. Very well. Oh, uh, that's your Jordan folder? Huh? And a most interesting one. Among other things is this newspaper clipping. I will permit you to read it. I took the clipping, a two-column spread like you'll find in the more sensational papers back home. When I saw the byline, Eddie Harper, I knew what followed. It made good reading. It was all about me, Rocky Jordan, the lone wolf of Cairo. It listed a number of incidents around the tambourine, including murder, the dates, but omitting the true facts. It mentioned knockout drops in a customer's drink, with no investigation by the police. It hinted at my relationship with Captain Sam Sabaya, and ended with quotes by me. I'm the one American who can get away with anything in Cairo, and the authorities can't touch me. Well, Mr. Jordan? Where'd you get this? It arrived by airmail from New York this morning. You should be more careful of your interview. I didn't give an interview, Amon Bay. Or perhaps you did not realize that this would find its way back to Cairo? We are most interested in such things as this. I tell you, none of it's true. The whole story's a pack of lies. Indeed. Including this statement of yours, that the authorities of Cairo cannot touch you? I didn't say that. I had no reason to. And you also deny the incident of the tampered drinks? Although I have a complete statement by the doctor who was at the scene. Look, get Eddie Harper here, the guy who wrote that. I'll make him put it straight. We prefer to handle this in our own way. The affair of the tampered drinks is reason enough for withdrawing your license. That's all it takes, huh? No hearing, no chance for me to defend myself. You are not on trial. Now, Mr. Jordan, this relationship between you and the Captain Sabaya. What about it? How much have you been paying him? Not a cent, I'm on pay. Now get this, not a cent. <laughs> Naturally. I might remind you there's only one way for one to stay in business in my sector. Do you quite understand? No, not all of it. How long do I stay closed? That is something for you to decide, is it not? Sure. Anything to make it easy. Look, I've been living at my cafe. That is beyond my control, but admit one customer to your tambourine and you will be subject to arrest. I believe that is all for now, Mr. Jordan. Amon Bay laid my folder aside and I got out. It was easy to understand Sam Sabaya's feelings now. And if I was to clear him and myself, I had to find Eddie Harper. Whether this was his idea of a joke or a real shakedown, I didn't care. I was going to pound the truth out of him. A reporter at the Gazette gave me his address, the Memlook House. The room clerk there said Eddie was out for the evening, so I tried a few of the haunts around that section with no luck and finally drove back to the dark tambourine. I parked across the narrow street behind a little British MG car at the curb, went across to my door. I just had the key in the lock when a figure moved out a couple of doorways down. Shh. Hey, Jordan. Who is it? You know me, Eddie Harper. I want to see you. Eddie, I'll bet you do. Come on, then. I stood watching Eddie, puzzled as he moved slowly along the wall toward me. He got only half... Ah! Ah! The shots had come from the MG across the way. I made a dive for a shadow. The little car hopped away from the curb, skidded around the corner, and was gone. Then I was up looking for Eddie Harper. I found him slumped on the sidewalk. The first shot had been enough. He was dead. CBS is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Another Tuesday night's coming up on CBS, and this one brings the return of an old friend, Luigi Basco. 
the wonderful little topsy-turvy ex-immigrant. Yes, you can live life with Luigi again on Tuesday nights on CBS when you'll also find more fun with Candid Microphone and thrills galore with Mystery Theater and Satan's Waitin'. Life with Luigi, Candid Microphone, Mystery Theater, Satan's Waitin', they'll all be here this Tuesday on most of these same CBS stations. Join us, won't you? Now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, City of Bakshish. Well, I'd gone out to find Eddie Harper to make him clear up a story he'd written for a New York newspaper. One that had put me in bad with the Cairo authorities and had Sam Sabai in the doghouse along with me. It turned out Eddie found me just before he was cut down by shots fired from a car that made its getaway in the night. Now I could clear out or call headquarters and face what was to come. I made the call for my tambourine, then drove directly to headquarters to wait for Sam. He came in his office an hour later. Well, Jordan, so again it comes to this. All right, Sam, you got me. I shoot a man down in front of my tambourine, call the cops, and give myself If up. such is not the case, then do not say it. What else is anybody to think? I had plenty of reason. You know who Eddie Harper was? Yes, I do. A correspondent of sorts who wrote a damaging article about you for a New York newspaper. Didn't do you any good either, Sam. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry about that, the hint of bribery. Jordan, I must have the details now, all of them. Well, Eddie was drinking at my tambourine bar a week ago. Somebody slipped knockout drinks into his drink. Just a moment. It was the drink of Eddie Harper that was tempered with? Didn't you know, Sam? Um, please continue. Well, Eddie no sooner came out of it in my office than he came up with a deal. I was to help him dig up the wrong stories and visiting tourists. He'd write them up and use them for blackmail, threatening to get them published back in the States. That was all you talked about? I said no dice, and right away he threatened a story on me. I wasn't sure he meant it till Amon Bey showed me the clipping. Then if such is the case, the mention of my name... I didn't say anything like it, Sam. You know me better than that. To go on, Jordan, about tonight. Eddie came up to me at the tambourine. The shots came from across the street. Somebody driving an MG that got away fast. I didn't see who it was. Uh, regarding the incident a week ago, was there anyone with Eddie Harper... Yeah, a washed-out blonde named Pearl Florin. Better look her up, Sam. Uh, as it happens, her address was found in his pockets. Uh, check somebody else about that affair at my cafe. Uh, mm -hmm. A French doctor who showed up way too easy. Dr. Bear, a reputable physician of Cairo. We can forget him. Uh, have it your way. Well, do I uh, get a clean cell? Jordan, you can well realize my position. There are those above me who might well question... Oh, sure, Sam. But I will delay booking you on one condition. That you report here at seven tomorrow morning. Well, it doesn't give me much time, but thanks. Seven o'clock, then. Not a moment later. I left knowing Sam had something big on his mind. What, to give me a rope? Looked more like he wanted me to clear things up, and for some reason he couldn't do it himself. So I started back at Eddie Harper's place, the Memlook house. Has Eddie Harper come back yet? Mr. Harper is out for the evening. You're sure? As sure as the first time you asked about him, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't mind my looking in his room just to make certain, huh? Hmm. I suppose you will say that you are his long-lost father. No, no, no. Just a friend with a five-pound note. Uh, <clears throat> Do I shove it under the blotter or mail it to your grandmother? Uh, shh, please. The blotter. The room key came to me the same way. A little box she will swing most anything in Cairo. That's something I was going to remember later. The key unlocked 204, and I went in, not turning on the light. A match found the desk. It came open without too much trying. On top were some bills from a cleaner, a printer, a typewriter rental. I shoved them in my pocket and kept looking. In a drawer, I found a carbon copy of the story Eddie had written about me. And underneath, another one. A real juicy item about a visiting American at Shepherd's named Cedric Kane. I kept it, too. Before I could look any more, a key sounded in the door lock outside. I moved behind the door and let it open. I held it till she got to the desk, then I snapped on the lights. Oh, Florence, the name, isn't it? Rocky. It's the idea. 
Yeah, I'm wondering. You came looking for something, too. What is it? None of your business. Well, let's make sure, huh? You let go, my prince. What do you think you'll find in there? Yeah, some knockout pills, maybe? Oh, that routine again. Well, you're out of luck. I told you I didn't fix Eddie's drink. You can't put the heat on me. This, uh, this gun, then. What about it? girl has got a right to some protection. Yeah, uh, it didn't kill him. Kill who? You didn't know? Eddie Hop is dead. Murdered. No kidding. No tears, Pearl? Let it sink in, Rocky. I, I don't get it. I don't get it at all. You ever hear of a man named Cedric Kane? No. Why should I? Uh, skip it. Anyhow, the police are looking for you, Pearl. That's a laugh. The police can't touch me. Now, you better get going before I look one up. I'll do better than that. I'll help you find one. I shoved Pearl out the door, down the steps, and through the lobby before anyone could stop us. As luck had it, a uniformed man was at the corner. He had Sabaya's pickup order for Pearl Florin and took her away. I was still looking for the killer of Eddie Harper. My only lead took me to Shepherd's, in the room of an American named Cedric Cade. A servant admitted me, then went out. Come in. Come in. What can I do for you? Yeah, it looked like I had something here. Seated at a table, gnawing at a leg of lamb, was the 300 pounds I'd seen following Eddie Harper out of my cafe a week ago. Well, pick up, my good man. Jordan's the name. Uh, cafe Tambourine. You were there about a week ago. Mm, tambourine? As a matter of fact, I was. Sit down. Have a bite to eat. Oh, mm. thanks, but I've got a weak stomach. <laughs> Regrettable. <clears throat> Mr. Kane, uh, you know a man named Eddie Harper? Harper... What about him? I just found something in his room, a carbon of a story he wrote about you. How dare you, sir? Give that to me. Oh, here, take it. Nobody's seen it but me. I'm not in on the blackmail, Mr. Kane. I know what Eddie's racket was. I'm here about something else. And what is it? Speak up, man. It's about Eddie Kane's death. Somebody shot him in front of my tambourine. Oh, it's excellent news. Good riddance. Mm. Sure, you want to have something to eat, Mr. Jordan? Look, I've got to find out who killed him. Plenty of people had reasons. Mm. As you say, perhaps uh, even you, hmm? Is that it? Well, let's start with you. You mind telling me where you were around 9 o'clock tonight? Wait, now. Are you suggesting that I did the killing? Maybe. That's impossible, sir. I arrived in Cairo less than an hour ago. I've been in Alexandria for the past three days. I'll stand some checking. Then do that. Say, by the way, uh, have you got a little British MG car? MG? <laughs> Can you imagine a man of my size squeezed behind the wheel of such a tiny car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. Cedric Kane obviously was a waste of time. Outside in the street, I stood there shuffling through the other stuff I'd found in Eddie's room. One was a bill from the Faro print shop on the Sharia Luna. It gave me a wild hunch that sent me moving again. The print shop was a little, disordered, one-man place. Dark, except for a tiny nightlight in the back. When no one answered my knock, a skeleton key got me in, and I started the search. Desks, drawers... Finally, at the bottom of a big wastebasket, I found it. A rough proof of the complete story Eddie Harper had written about me. It gave me part of his blackmail scheme, but it didn't clear me of murder. I turned to look some more. A clumsy move and flipped the switch on a small press. I got it turned off quick. I ducked down behind the press, waiting to make sure the sound hadn't brought anybody. When I stood up, the next thing I saw was a freshly printed sheet right out of that press. Another story. One look told me I had everything I wanted. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. Granby's Green Acres. The hilarious misadventures of a city chap who thought he'd find peace by turning farmer is heard on most of these same CBS stations every Monday evening. Gail Gordon plays the ex-bank teller who, with his family, moves to the country and tries to raise crops as the books advise him to. Hear the latest comedy on Granby's Green Acres this Monday, won't you? Back now to Rocky Jordan for the conclusion of tonight's story. 
The late theater crowds were just letting out as I hunked my way across the Solomon Pasha and drove down the hill toward the Nile till I found the home of the little commissioner of licenses, Amon Bay. The fancy house went with the gold braid and his fez. My knock got an answer. A sleepy servant let me in. Pretty soon Amon Bay came down, drawing a robe around him. My late visit didn't bother him at all. Uh, that will be all, Futar. <clears throat> well, Mr. Jordan. Possibly you have given our recent conversation some thought. Plenty, Amon Bay. It took some time to sink in. Some things are best unspoken. Yeah, sure. I should have known what you meant about how a man stays in business in your sector. Well? Bakshish doesn't go just for the beggars, does it? Take something under the table for a few of the big boys, too. Mr. Jordan, now that we quite understand each other... How much do you want? What does it take to get my tambourine open again? That depends on how soon you wish it to open. Ah, uh, I thought so. Eddie Harper worked with you in the blackmail, but it was your pressure. He got the story in print, one that would force even a man like Captain Sabaya to cooperate in kicking me out. That is quite beside the point. Trouble is, the story's no good, Amon Bay. It never was published in a New York paper. The clipping you have was run off in a little print shop on the Sharia Luna. How can you make me believe that? With this proof I just found in that shop. It's the same story. Look at it. I, uh, this does not involve me. Trouble is, I found another story there. One run off just today. The printer hadn't yet taken the type out of the press. Ah, read it. Why, uh... Another expose, Amon Bay. But this time about you. How you threw the blackmail on me and a lot of other businessmen in your sector. This time, the pressure was on you. Eddie's scheme was ripe for the big payoff. I will keep this. No one will ever see it. Yeah, think again. It's still in the press. So Eddie brought one of these clippings to you, threatened to show it around unless you paid off. Maybe he'd come to tell it to me. So you had to kill him. And now it is you who come for the payoff. Is that it? No, no, no. It's just to tell you I opened the tambourine at nine in the morning. Mr. Jordan. Did you think that I would talk to you without a gun in my possession? It takes something like that to make a big man out of you. You are close enough. Go oh, on, shoot, Amon Bay. Show everybody how you get away with murder, too. Mr. Jordan, it is not the first time. That's all I wanted to hear. He let me get a step too close. My fist slapped the gun away. Came up knocking the gold braided fez off his head. <laughs> That's all it took to make Amon Bay a little man again. Fifteen minutes later, he was at headquarters trying to answer all of Sam Sabaya's questions. I didn't have to wait long before Sam came back to his office. Well, Jordan, the license for your tambourine is in good order. Oh, thanks, Sam. That means you're off the hook, too. Yes, once my men return from the Pharaoh print shop with the evidence. Hey, tell me something, will you? You had every reason to hold me tonight, after Eddie Harper's death. Why didn't you? Oh, they're grasping at a straw, perhaps. A box of tablets found in Eddie Harper's pockets. A knockout pills, I believe you call them. You mean Eddie fixed up his own drink in my cafe? Obviously. What better way is there to be convincing? Not beyond a person of his rash nature. Well, no wonder I was fooled. Hey, what about the girl, Pearl Florin? In Amon Bay's employ to spy on Harper's activities. So the Bay sent her to Harper's room to remove any evidence that might be left. Quite true. It seems that the Bay dared not trust anyone. Uh, that figures... Like some big man said, a man's a fool to trust anybody. <laughs> a dangerous philosophy, is it not, Jordan? <laughs> Let's forget philosophy, Sam. It's time for coffee. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine. Same time, same station. And the story is The Man from Damascus. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and John Dunkel, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya. Original music is composed and conducted by Richard Arant. Rocky Jordan is produced and directed by Cliff Howell.
Bob Stevenson speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind.